Gentlemen, how are you today? BC, we're good. Well, I'm good. He's recovering. Yep. How are you dressed right now, Bob? Are you dressed up in some costume of some sort? No, I'm like you. You know, I'm well. No, you 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 have your um, you have your finery on today. Armani today, Colangelo. <laughs> Colangelo no. always looks pretty good. Not Armani. No, Zania. Uh, it's uh, Palzaliri. Who? <laughs> Palzaliri. Okay. I, I, well, I assume it's very nice. Is it like? Um, is it dark? It's dark. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tie? No tie. It's a somber tie. affair, you know. Opening, tie. Omer, tie. opening night is, is opening, a somber opening, affair. Opening night tie. Yeah. Right. Hey, every night should be opening night in in this business. I mean, uh, you know, with the uh, amount of excitement and the enthusiasm just ex- expressed by, you know, people in the organization. I, I love to see it. It's great. Right. Well, and we were just talking about the lockout in the NHL and the fact that you guys aren't in a lockout and you're starting on time this year. And it's got And it's got to feel... Not only with the chains of personnel on your roster and how your roster looks, but it's just got to feel so much better having had a full training camp going into the season. Well, no question. I I feel best for a coach to you know not be so nervous uh, last year uh, to be coming into a situation newly hired, unable to speak to the players leading up to the uh, start of camp. Right. Uh, really very difficult, and then have to you know get everything organized and, and put it together in 10 days, including two exhibition games. It was tough. But 30 days is, uh, I'm going to say, almost too long. Uh, we played seven games, uh, had some success. It, it's meaningless in the big picture as it relates to the win-loss record, but it's, it's huge for us to create a winning habit and uh, to understand what it takes to win. So uh, it was a productive camp. Uh, we're cautiously optimistic going in, and uh, yes, it feels a lot better than last year being in the situation that hockey now faces. Uh, we were talking about when the lockout ended last year. Do you remember the date? Uh, I want to say it was sometime in December, and yeah. we started on the 25th, so about December 5th or 6th. Yeah, that's what. Uh, that's approximately what I would say, yeah. too. We just wanted yeah. to confirm that. Yeah, that was there. It was on or about December fifth or sixth, if I recall. Uh, did you watch any ga- any games? Of course, you did. You watched games last night, didn't you? Did you watch the Lakers a bit? I did. I watched the first half of that game, and uh, you know, it's loaded with talent. You know, it looks like a group coming together, and they're still learning how to play with each other. Of course, Dwight wasn't there for the full camp. Uh, it's going to take some time to adapt to the offense that they're running, uh, and clearly, Steve is not comfortable with it, but that's just my observation. And, uh, you know, we'll see if they continue to go down that path. Well, that's an interesting point that you raise. Um, Given the importance of your point guard, and especially of a point guard like Steve Nash, Mm -hmm. isn't it important? I mean, if you, and I know you don't want to second guess them, or maybe you do, but uh, does there come a point, do you think, when maybe if, if Nash isn't comfortable and this offense doesn't work, you say, out of hell with it, Steve. Do what you're used to doing. I, I don't think so. I, I think that there's going to be different moments in the game where they'll be able to apply you know, the Steve Nash type of offense. But I, I'll tell you, if, if they find a comfort level and everyone gets comfortable playing together, uh, you know, a guy named Michael Jordan always had a guy that was there and ready to shoot the shot. And it was either Steve Kerr or John Paxson you know, or Craig Hodges but, uh, you know, in, in this situation, Kobe Bryant, to have a guy like Steve Nash that he can throw the ball to to make a clutch three or a clutch shot when the game needs it, uh, it's, I think it's huge. And he can play off the ball a little bit that way because Kobe still is going to have the ball in his hands uh, for a significant portion of time. So, you know, we'll see how it plays out. It's, I think it's just so new to everybody and, right. and playing together with that many, you know, talented players. It takes time. You know, the most disturbing thing, I, and I watched a good piece of the game, so I got a sense of what was going on, but if I hadn't watched and simply had looked at the line score uh, last night or this morning, and I don't remember exactly what it was, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Steve got something like six or seven points, six or seven assists. Mm-hmm. You know um, the Lakers, nobody is going to win with Steve Nash with those kinds of numbers. He, he's got to he's got to have more assists, and he probably has to have at least double digit points, doesn't he? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think you got to wait and see how it plays out. Uh, clearly, you know, Kobe's a special player, um, and he's still got a lot left, and he's still able to to win you a get basketball game by himself. And again, you throw all that other talent out there around him. I, I, let's not draw a conclusion on one game. No, I guess not. 
No, and I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying that I thought there were there were obvious reasons why this team didn't perform last and, night. And the guide may be the Miami Heat. And last night you watched those, and this is after, what, now this is their third season third together. Season. And how well they play together. So, so let's talk about your guys, Brian. I mean, you've got a lot of new players. How used are they used to playing de- to, with each other? Or how unfamiliar might they be until it takes them some time to get into the season and really get to know each other? Yeah, you you point out that we do have you know five or six new faces, yeah. but uh, in particular, you, you talk about three potentially in a starting lineup: Lowry, Fields, and and Valanciunas. Uh, that that clearly is going to take some time for everyone to get comfortable. But we've had the benefit of you know the the time together. Again, Lowry was out maybe two weeks. Uh, Jonas was out a couple of weeks. Um, the the bottom line is though, we don't have that same sort of. Um, let's say star power that the Lakers are dealing with, that's an issue for them. You know, they're all trying to sort out egos on the court. Right. And we're just trying to sort out, you know, roles on the court right now. Well, I mean, they're trying to short, sort out how are we going to share this, mm-hmm. but you're trying to sort out who's going to step forward and lead this group. So you tell me starting tonight, who do you want to see? I mean, has it got to be Kyle Lowry? Uh, I, I think uh, Kyle is is clearly the guy that uh, you know gives us an edge, something that we haven't had in the past. Uh, really, on both ends of the floor, I think he's a big shot maker. Uh, I do believe that he's going to push the tempo a little bit, and we've been talking, stressing, pushing the pace of our offense. Um, but you know, we've done so many things here to to pick up the intensity defensively. You know, Valanciunas is going to be a big part of that. I think uh, Landry Fields is a big part of that. You know, he's he's one of these intangible type of players that, you know, does a lot of things out there on the court, don't necessarily show up on the box score. But, you know, and Jonas is doing a lot of the same thing. So I, I just think that, again, sorting through everything that we've seen so far, um, I'm cautiously optimistic that this is going to come together and work well. Uh, the question is, you know, how well will it work and, and how deep are we and how talented are we? Is it going to get us to where we want to go, which is competing for a playoff spot? That's got to be determined purely by playing games. But, you know, all teams are in the same boat. Our biggest issue is that 15 of our first 22, I believe, are on the road. And, you know, that could be a good thing. It could be a negative. Uh, we, we just need to, to see how it plays. With Brian Colangelo, the president GM of the Raptors, uh, we chatted a couple times during the off season. Uh, I talked to Coach Casey on a couple uh, occasions during the off season. I got the distinct impression from both of you that you were trying to minimize your expectations on what Jonas Valanciunas would be able to do in his first season. I got no sense that e- either of you expected him to be a starter. Mm-hmm. How did that? How did that unfold? Oh, it it shows that I I can play poker then with you because, uh, you know, look, we've been talking about this all the way back to when we were constructing the roster, going into the draft and going into, uh, you know, free agency and then summer league. I I, I said to coach all along, listen, I I don't want to tell you who to play. You've got to make that determination. But here's reasons why it makes sense. And this is before we had even seen him. In a in a practice situation or in a game situation, and it it just based on what I knew he was capable of doing, based on the observations of everything we had seen, um, there's only one way to really deal with a player like this, in my opinion. You've got to throw him in there and let him cut his teeth quickly, uh, because it's too easy for a coach to be in a situation to put in the veteran player. And then if things aren't going right, he can look down to the bench and say, well, I can't go to the rookie right now. The best way to sometimes get someone some experience, much-needed experience, by the way, is early on in a game. And, and you might even see some of that happen eventually with uh, Terrence Ross, maybe not in the starting lineup, but you know, going to him early so that he can you know, get into a game situation and, and not have that uh, pressure on everybody in the third and fourth right. quarter. But, you know, it's, it's, Valanciunas is, is capable of doing a lot because because he's so active and he's a difference maker on the court, and I knew he would be. Um, but has he outplayed the others? Does he deserve to start? Yes, he. he I believe he he has gotten to a point where we can't, you know, really go into this situation without putting him out there because it really is the way we function best. I believe. Well, and I would also say to you, and I think you would agree, that one of the other things you and I talked about, and and we talked to Casey about was the concern that you have with every young player, especially a young big, and that is that they get into foul trouble in a Mm -hmm. big hurry. Mm -hmm. And 
this kid through the preseason shocked many, myself included, yeah. by avoiding that. Even that uh, fourth quarter performance against the Knicks where he had five and he stayed out. And he Belco, stayed out there, including yeah. Including blocking one of Amari's shots going to the basket. So, look, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for uh, his level of maturity for you know, just being 20 years old. Physically, he's mature. Uh, emotionally and mentally, he's mature. I think he handles himself real well. Um, again, let's not anoint him, uh, you know, a Hall of Famer today. Let's, no, no. let's let it play. But he's he's really in a good position to have the kind of impact that we were all hoping for. And now that he has uh, rightfully earned that spot, uh, let's hope that you know we're able to maintain some sort of performance that the coach feels comfortable uh, continuing on in that uh, regard. Now, I would have imagined, since we're talking about maturing in the maturation process, I would imagine that in an ideal world for Brian Colangelo, one of the names starting tonight would have been Ed Davis. Still not starting, still not sure what he is as an NBA player. You tell me. I mean, are, are, are we getting anywhere with this young man? Is he any yeah, closer he, to being the player you want him to be? Yeah, believe it or not, uh, I would say to a man, uh, if you walked around our, our offices and spoke to the management team, uh, everybody felt like Ed had probably one of the most impressive starts to the season this year um, than anyone in, in the group. And, you know, he he's performed uh, very well on, in the minutes that he's played. Uh, he's very confident. He's decisive. Uh, out there with the ball, um, he defensively he's got great instincts. That's something that we didn't have to you know really work on. But he's gotten physically tougher, so it, it helps him with those instincts. And then just uh, with the work that he's done with his shot, you know he really did re-engineer his shot this summer, uh, and it has made him more confident and thus more effective uh, in terms of production out there offensively. So. Um, he's had a great camp. It's just that, you know, there's someone that happens to score 20 points ahead of him at the four spot. And, uh, you know, for now, he's a reserve. That's one of our strengths. Our depth is very good. And we'll be, uh, you know, regardless of who's healthy night in and night out, we'll have people to turn to. What are the problems with being 10 deep as opposed to 7 deep or 8 deep? Because you probably are 10 deep. you got a lot of guys that probably deserve minutes. Yeah, it, you know what? That that is a very you know solid observation, and it's something that the coach is going to have to manage, to, uh, keeping everybody happy and uh, content throughout the year. Uh, even tonight, determining who was going to be on the inactive list, it was very difficult decision to make. Uh, at the end of the day, it came down to matchups. Uh, you know, some nights it may be what bigs were playing. Do you put a big on the uh, inactive list tonight? The fact that Granger is not available. Uh, based on a knee injury, um, we said, you know, let's let's probably go the way of putting Dominic McGuire there because he would have been a guy that if push came to shove and we needed a stop, you know, he's a guy you can turn to to get that stop, uh, you know, for all those reasons. You know, the different nights will present different challenges, different days throughout this year, uh, you know, keeping everyone happy, assuming everyone's healthy. But uh, depth is a good thing, uh, but it needs to be managed. Uh, Klaza has had a significant or definitive, at least, role with this club uh, in the past. Um, has he lost his 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 standing? I would tell you that you know him last year coming back from the uh, knee surgery was difficult to find a comfort level, but he was still you know somewhat effective in certain situations. He just wasn't him uh, himself. But this summer, he showed that he was back and, and had a really brilliant summer playing for the Lithuanian national team. Going forward, though, I, he seems to be a little bit fatigued or tired because he hasn't been as effective and, and has probably had a disappointing camp, if you will. I don't know if I've said that to him specifically, so let's hope he's not listening to the radio tonight because I want him in a good mood. But he's... You know he's struggled a little bit. He still has had great practices, and you know he's helped uh, you know his team in different scrimmages. Uh, you know win some games with the shot making ability. But if there's one guy that I would say you know has maybe taken a step back from his summer activity, it was probably Kleza. So time will tell how much of a role will Landry Fields have. Um, right now he's jumped into the starting lineup. You know, the young guys that we want to bring along. Uh, you know, there's going to be times where DeRozan's at the three, uh, Terrence Ross is at the two. You might have an Allen Anderson playing the swing position. Um, and then Dominic McGuire is going to be needed at times to be a more physical presence against some of the guys that, that we need to stop. So it's going to be tough. Minutes are going to be tight, especially at that position. 
Now, normally, as we and we started out talking about this way, you'd have uh, the the Leafs would be out there, and they'd be getting a lot of the attention uh, here in Toronto from the sports media. Now, that scrutiny, I think, it, to a significant extent, will switch over to the Raptors. And you talked about fifteen of twenty-two to start on the road. Yeah. So is that extra scrutiny a positive thing for you guys? Or, I mean, is it something you're going to have to manage a bit to make sure a young team doesn't doesn't struggle with the attention? Damien, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be that tangible. Uh, clearly, you know, we're always under a microscope uh, in terms of how we're performing. Uh, maybe not with the same level of emphasis, but I have to say that, you know, every night, I know that these guys are going to go out and play hard because coach insists on it. And I know every day at practice they're going to be going through the things that the players probably don't want to go through, but because the coaches are so prepared, that's what we're doing. Um, he's really changed the, the atmosphere here. He's changed the culture. Um, we're prepared for whatever challenge that is. And if, it, if it's the media scrutiny and, and we may be underachieving or underperforming, that comes with the territory, and, and we're prepared for that. But, uh, you know, I, I just want to still say, as we go through this process, we are still building. Uh, you know, we're calling it acceleration from rebuilding to building to acceleration, but we're still trying to get back to that level of contention for the playoffs day in and day out. And, and that's the, the next step that we need to take. If it takes some time and still some growing pains with the new faces, as we talked about, you know, we need to be prepared for that. And if, uh, if criticism comes with that, great. I'd like to think, you know, we can be competitive and, and uh, jump ahead of some of the expectations. But, you know, again, it, all this is uh, to be determined over the next uh, four months. Uh, before we let you go, um, this is uh, the time of season where we all make predictions, of course. Uh, Doug Smith was on with us uh, yesterday, and uh, he boldly predicted 38 victories for your club. Uh, I more boldly predicted 42 victories for your club. How many did Doug say? I'm sorry? 38. Okay. And I went 42. Wow. Uh -huh. Look um, at you guys. You'd take either one of those, wouldn't you? Well, 41 arguably gets you to the playoffs. Statistically, uh, there's only been one team that, won 40 and didn't make it in the East in the last eight years. And it right. was us the year that we uh, lost uh, uh, the 14 game, the, the last 14 games, you know, Chris Bosch, you know, had, uh, right. had a broken face and couldn't play. But at the end of the day, you know, 41 gets you to the playoffs. I'm going to go with your number and hope that that's where we get. <laughs> um, Doug's number would be a disappointment to me because we wouldn't make the playoffs. So I'll take your number if you're offering it. By the way, uh, Chris Bosch allegedly couldn't play. You left that word out. <laughs> I don't think he wants to go back there. <laughs> he played last night. <laughs> well, he guess he wanted to, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Colangelo. Best of luck tonight. I'm sure you'll look beautiful out there, and um, uh, we wish you the best of luck on uh, not only on this evening but on the upcoming season. And. Um, I know we'll have chances to chat as we move through the process. Okay, but thank you very much. Thanks. Right, Brian okay. Colangelo, President General Manager of the Toronto Raptors.